and welcome to the Uncreative Crafter. My name is Jen and I am your host. Today is Sunday, October 25th and this is episode 20. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I really appreciate that you're taking the time to check me out today and if you're a returning viewer, I also appreciate that you have come back for a little bit more. If you're new to the podcast, this is primarily a fiber arts, so knitting, occasionally some spinning, theoretically some weaving, and occasionally crochet podcast um, with a couple of other crafts and a little bit of life stuff thrown in at the end. Uh, and Ozzy <laughs> is awake and wandering around the apartment, so there may be a couple of um, edits while she's being naughty. Uh, so we are in, uh, you know, a good start of fall. It's been fall for about a month here in New Hampshire, but it finally started to get cold. Uh, we finally did put on the heat, and so I made myself a cup of tea. It is um, stash tea, and it's lavender Tulsi or Tulsi. I actually don't know how to pronounce it. I have it in my Connecticut mug, so you'll have to bear with me as I take sips occasionally as I'm pretty chilly, and honestly, I needed the calming effect of the tea. We'll talk about that later. And um, I forgot to mention, though, this will be in the end of the podcast. You can find me around the web. Uh, Twitter, Ravelry, Periscope, uh, Storm Coast, Instagram, etc. But there will be a nice scrolly list of where you can find me if you haven't found me already on those places. Please feel free to friend me or just to say hi. I really love chatting with people. So let's get a little bit of um, housekeeping, I guess, out of the way. Um, I do need to pick for the fiber stash giveaway, but I forgot to grab the fiber stash fiber. So our first cut, hang on. Inevitably, I forget something. So I have been running a um, giveaway in the Ravelry group, which is the Uncreative Crafter podcast fans. Ran it a little bit longer than I thought I was going to, but it gave you guys more time to enter, which was cool. Uh, I gave you a link to my friend Christy's store. It's called Fiber Stash, and I asked you to tell me either your favorite yarn colorway or um, your favorite fiber if you didn't like any of the yarn colorways. And you were entered for a chance to win some of her New Year's Eve colorway on her Twinkle Toes sock base, which is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% twinkle, 438 yards. And I think there were 37 entries. So let's click on over real quick back to the group. And I've locked the thread, and we had, yep, because I was number one, we had 37 entries, which is really awesome. And um, just to mention, um, Christy's shop does look a little bare at the moment. She recently went to the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, and I don't think she's put any of her stock back in her shop yet. But if you see something that you want to order, she said to message her, because if she doesn't have it, she can dye it up. I know that she has the, uh, the Twinkle Toes base and the um, tweed sock base in stock right now. So you can get her colors on that. Also, she did want me to mention, because at least one person uh, had mentioned that she doesn't ship internationally, which I didn't realize when I opened up the contest, um, but I talked to her about that. She said the website she uses is a little limiting, but if you send her an email, she's happy to figure out how to ship internationally to you. So please don't let that be uh, if you were interested in anything in her shop, please don't let either of those things be a reason why you don't pick something up from her, because she's obviously very happy to work with someone who wants to buy some of her stuff, and I don't blame her. I would be too. So, we had 37 entries for this yarn, and I'm totally stealing this. Uh, Claire from the New Hampshire Knits podcast did this, and um, usually I would either like throw a bunch of names in a hat or do a random number generator off camera but got a phone why not do that so let's see if this works pick a number between 2 and 38 it's 16 she picked 16 so 16 is on the first page and that is that is oh I'm gonna mispronounce this terribly it's lollipop lol pop one and this is a lovely gal who's been watching the podcast for a while, and I can't pronounce her name, her real name either. <laughs> I'm not even going to try, because I'm sure it's beautiful, and I don't want to screw it up. But anyway, I'm super excited for you, because I know you've been a podcast watcher for a while, and you're in Canada. 
So that's really awesome. I'll, um, I'll give you a little bit of time to watch the episode, and then if I don't hear from you in a week or two, I'll send you a message so we can arrange me shipping you your yarn. So congratulations to, uh, to you. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Sorry. So that is housekeeping number one. And then uh, I actually did also hit over 100 members in the Ravelry group. And I thought about opening up a contest for this, but I thought maybe it would just be easier and maybe a little bit more fun if I just picked a random winner from um, the group members. So uh, there are currently 105 group members, 104 if you don't count me. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, have Siri pick a random number between those, and I'm going to give you $10 of Ravelry pattern credit. And that can go towards one pattern. If you can find a couple of patterns that you like that add up to 10 or less uh, in U.S. dollars, we'll figure it out. And if there's some way for me to do a gift card, if you want a pattern that's more or an ebook or something, we'll figure that out too. I've never done this before, so we're going to see how well it goes. Pick a number between 2 and 105. The answer is 26. 26. So let's see who number 26 is. 26 is Iggy Star. Yay! Iggy Star and I have done uh, a swap before where we sent each other mini skeins, and I actually got to see her at Rhinebeck, which I forgot to mention on my Rhinebeck episode, which was really silly of me. She was awesome. She gave me a hug, and we took a picture together. And so, Iggy Star, you are going to get... $10 of Ravelry pattern credit. So I will go ahead and link you in the um, thread that I open up for this episode, and we will um, figure out what exactly you'd like to get. So congratulations to you. And I will also be opening up some kind of giveaway on Instagram, because I also hit uh, 200 um, followers on Instagram, but I'll probably do an Instagram only like comment on this picture and it'll probably be the same prize, $10 of um, Ravelry pattern credit. So, lots of giveaways, lots of housekeeping. But that is probably not all of what you're here for. You're probably also here for some knitting slash crafting content. So, um, what I'm working on. Really not a ton of things. Um, there are some things in hibernation still that I should work on, but... What can you do? So we'll talk about the first thing, the reason why I did not want to record today. And that's my Agatha socks. Um, these were socks that were gifted to me by Claire of the New Hampshire Knits podcast as a thank you for promoting her pattern and hosting a giveaway on my podcast. And uh, Claire designed these socks. They're beautiful. And I was um, really trucking along on them until about two hours ago. And I... Um, had made a mistake in the pattern and moved a marker where I shouldn't have and everything was a little bit off and I had put in a lifeline six rows before and um, ripped back to it and got every other single stitch on the needle except for one. It was a pearl above a pearl three. I don't even know what happened. The little lifeline went like in a big curly Q loopy knot thing and I tried and my husband looked at it and I just could not get it back to where I wanted it to be. And rather than deal with the potential of a dropped stitch and ruined sock, I made the extremely difficult decision <laughs> to rip it back. And I don't like doing that. Like, what's the point of a lifeline if it can't, you know, prevent you from having to rip everything back? But I was able to salvage the ribbing. So it's not a total loss. Um, I've still got 12 rows of ribbing. Um, but anyway, these are probably going to go to the naughty corner for a little while to think about what I've done, because it's not their fault, it's what I did. Um, and this is some Red Heart Heart and Soul in, like, the, I don't know, natural color way. Uh, and I think part of my problem, too, might have been that my lifeline is white, and this is cream, and it just made it very difficult to see exactly where the lifeline was in that one stitch. But this is probably the only time I'll ever knit socks in a creamy natural color, and if I do it again, I will know to buy a different color crochet cotton for the lifeline, because that was devastating. That was very difficult for me. I'm very unhappy about this. <laughs> so I won't be uh, finishing this in time for her uh, knit-along, which ends on Halloween, because that's in less than a week. I have the cuff of one sock, so 
a little bummed about that because there were some awesome prizes, but I'll get over it eventually. So that is the first thing that I'm working on, and I'm really bummed because I'd made it past the gusset and the decreases, and I was back onto the regular part of the foot. Nope. And of course, I didn't have another lifeline in there. So, a lot of work down the drain, but what can you do? All right, the next thing that I'm working on um, are my Nitpicks Felici Time Traveler socks, and uh, these are growing a little bit better. Uh, these are just very simple, like I know my gauge and I know my foot size at this point. And um, I think that I was here the last time that you saw them. And I have knit, uh, I've knit in the waist yarn for the afterthought heel. And I've knit all the ribbing and I've actually bound off. So on this one I need to do the afterthought heel and weave in some ends and I'll have a finished sock. And then I will start the second one. And these are nice because thankfully if I rip back it's just a regular knit row, it's not a pattern row. <sighs> but I do still put in lifelines, because whenever I don't put in lifelines, I end up having to rip back the whole project anyway. So, lifelines are my friend, because I'm just really bad at knitting, apparently. Anyway, Nitpicks Felici, Time Traveler, Doctor Who inspired colorway. I love it. I can't wait to have these done and to wear them, and they're pretty mindless, so, you know, they'll, they'll work up pretty quickly, which is nice. And then the last thing that's technically a work in progress, even though it's also kind of a finished object, well, it's complicated, is my blarf, uh, which is the summer evening blarf pattern. It's a crochet pattern, and I believe her name is Esther Sandroff. Um, if I'm wrong, I'll put a little note in the bottom here. And I've been working on this since the end of August, and... Um, well, okay, so I guess I'll mention this now because it's going to tie into a couple of different things in the end. Anyway, life thing, uh, my grandfather died about a week and a half ago. And so, you know, that was really stressful, directly affected whether or not I was going to be able to go to Rhinebeck based on when the services were going to be. Um, and then it also sort of gave me an incentive to try and finish the blarf. I didn't completely finish it. I bought six balls of black acrylic, um, and I technically finished the pattern. I did all, um, I think it's all 44 rows of the pattern, but, um, I want to add more. It's, it, you know, it was functional as a shawl because I wore it to the services, but, um, I would like to use up all of the black yarn, so I am going to make it a little bit bigger. So I call it a finished object because I did wear it, but um, I still want to work on it. And this is a little bit big, so you'll have to bear with me here. And it's black, and I don't have any pictures of me wearing it. But I mean, you can see it's uh, pretty decently sized, even. You know, what I've done. And it's just a variety of different crochet stitches. Some double crochet, some double crochets where you, you know, skip. You chain and you skip and um, some single crochet thrown in there just because, I don't know, but nobody likes to single crochet, I think. It was not pleasant, but, and, um, you know, once I got into the swing of things, it worked out pretty quickly, um, and it will be a nice, I think, versatile wardrobe piece to wear around, because I don't think it looks cheesy or anything. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe everybody was just being really nice to me, I don't know. So those are the um, the three things that I'm really actively working on right now. Spinning, it's all on a hiatus, let's be honest. Weaving, we don't even talk about weaving anymore. But yeah. Uh, I did finish one thing, and I actually finished something that you've never seen as a working on item. So uh, Lynn of the Two Tangled Skeins video podcast, uh, it is her, it was her birthday, and... Um, she wanted to have uh, a handbrake knit along. There's a pattern by Kay Jones called the handbrake. It's very inexpensive. It was like, I think, one British pound when I bought it, uh, which at that time equaled out to about $1.50. And the proceeds of the pattern are going towards cancer research. And I thought for a dollar, I can certainly buy a pattern and also, you know, participate in this knit along. I'm notoriously awful at finishing knit alongs case in point, Agatha. Um, but it seemed like something I could do. I found some yarn in my stash, 
which um, is pretty old. It's at least two or three years old, and I thought it would be a good way to use it up. And it's not really me, but I'm sure I'll find someone who will want to wear it. And so this yarn is um, some yarn that I actually won in a giveaway. It's three Irish girls, um, Springvale worsted in the Bonnie and Blythe colorway. And yes, I haven't woven in the ends yet, but whatever. That's, you know, the least of my concerns. So it is crazy rainbow nuts. Like, it really basically eats up the pattern. I'm not really giving anything away. There's a diagonal zigzag in theory. There are some diagonal zigzagging, which you can't really see at all. Nope, can't see it. It maybe is a little bit more obvious in person. This is totally blowing my camera out. Uh, I did like that the yarn didn't really pool or flash or anything like that, which was nice. Um, binding off took forever, um, but it was good to actually finish a project and not screw up on it, and um, I haven't done anything in worsted weight in a while, so this was nice to work on. I did knit it accidentally an inch longer than I was supposed to because I was in the car, and I didn't have my measuring tape, and by the time I did, I'd already knit an inch longer, so it's nice and and big. I do think this is probably going to go live with somebody else, so it's just not quite my thing. It doesn't really go with my green uh, jacket. So, but that's okay, right? And then this has been a finished object for a while, but I finally got around to washing it and blocking it. Um, I think I even worked on this since I've been podcasting, um, and then I got a kitten, and then it was difficult to block anything. But I washed and blocked my Multnomah shawl. And I apologize, my husband is trying to wrangle the kitten in the background, so you may hear some weird noises. So the, um, the colors are just not good at all right now. Uh, they're very yellowed out because of the way the lighting is. Oh, this is just awful. Um, but anyway, it's a very beautiful yarn. I purchased it. <laughs> I purchased it when I went to visit my mom in um, Rhode Island a few years ago, and um, I was looking for more local yarns. So this is Ellen Cooper Yarn Sonnets uh, in her fine merino. It's a non-superwash merino, I believe. And this bled like crazy when I washed it. It is this enchanting mix of, like, turquoisey, teal, blue, green, just loveliness. Um, and the bottom blocked out pretty nicely. My only um, issue, and I don't know if I mentioned this, this is the Multnomah shawl, which is a free pattern, is it's very tiny. So I really only can wear it as a, like, a neckerchief. Um, and I tend to like my shawls a little bit bigger. But it was pretty, and it was nice to finally wash and block it out, and I've already worn it to work and gotten one compliment on it, so I'll take one over none. I've moved buildings, and um, I'm not in a building where a ton of people knit anymore, so I don't get as many compliments on my things, but that's okay. I don't wear them to get the compliments. I wear them because I like making them and wearing them, so. And so those are my finished objects. I do have a little bit of stash. Yes, I do, uh, in my defense. This is mostly pre Rhinebeck, and some of it was given to me, so I don't think it really counts. I did finally get my last of the um, the Mad Color Fiber Arts Geek Tour yarn, and uh, the last month of the three, you also get a stitched by Jessa Lou bag. I do already have a stitched by Jessa Lou bag that's also Doctor Who themed, but I don't care because I love her bag and. Bags are good things to have, let's be honest. Alright, so the yarn first. If you have not seen this or you don't want to be spoiled on it, even though at this point it's several weeks old, um, this is the September 2015 All of Time and Space Yarn Club shipment. This is called Bigger on the Inside. It is self-striping in her trans space, which is a fingering weight, 450 yard, 100 gram, 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. I only have one other yarn, that's a merino cashmere nylon, and um, I've not worked with this blend before, so I'm very excited, and I absolutely adore this colorway, bigger on the inside. And that is a little bit brighter than it really is in real life, but um, just these really bright mint greens, and um, 
yellow and sort of brownie oranges, and I'm just trying to block the light. <laughs> and these, um, it's not quite TARDIS blue, it's not what I would call a TARDIS blue. Um, maybe a little bit more blue-greeny than that, but it's just, I don't know, I love it. And I totally see where she got the inspiration from this, in my opinion, because I don't actually know. Uh, and it is from the Stitch by Jessa Lou bag, which came, and it was adorable, and the little note on the outside said something like, haven't you always wanted to own a piece of the TARDIS? And I love this bag, because it is basically a TARDIS bag. It is made out of TARDIS fabric. And I'm super duper excited about that. It's got her little logo, stitched by Jessa Lou, which is getting super blown out. You'll just have to believe me. It's got her little um, trademark B with the little jewels on it. And this is my favorite part because this is where I think she got the inspiration for the yarn. And I'm really hoping this shows up well. The inside, it's like galaxies. So you've got that yellow there. You've got, in my opinion, that orangey brown, the blue, and um, the like minty green. And I just love it because it's bigger on the inside. It's a galaxy in there. So um, overall, I was really pleased. I really loved two out of the three yarns, and um, the one that I wasn't super in love with, I'll still find something nice to make out of it. Just not quite my color combination, but that's what happens when you sign up for a yarn club. So it was a very good experience. The last shipment was late. She did explain why that was, and it's totally understandable. So overall, a positive experience. And I think I would do it again because it's fun to get different blends and different colors that you might not pick for yourself and you might find something that you really love. Like, I might not have ever picked this up for myself in a store, but getting it now, I really like it. So I'm very excited. Again, this was the Mad Color Fiber Arts Geek Tour with the bag by Stitched by Jessa Lou. And then I got some mini skeins from Sue of the Two Tangled Skeins podcast, and uh, her Etsy shop is the Tangled Skein CA. Now, I had sent her a couple of minis, and by minis, they were 20 grams because she was doing bigger squares for her blanket, and um, I use very little for my sock yarn blanket, and um, she sent me a bunch of minis. And she didn't know what most of these were, um, but that's totally fine. I do have a little spreadsheet going where I Right, who I got the yarn from and if they know what it is just because it'll be fun to um, see what people send me but we've got just a bunch of little tiny scrappies and they're super cute in little skein form I love them in their little skeins I mean they just keep coming and coming and oh my goodness just running out of room in my hand here So, I mean, I am, like, drowning in minis. So many minis. I have all of the minis. I'm going to be, um, it's going to give me something to do for a while, that's for sure. So, these are all my minis. And then she was super sweet, and she sent me some raspberry tea, which I love raspberry tea. That's the front of it. That's probably the side you wanted to see. And then Sue actually also makes project bags and stitch markers, and uh, she was really sweet, and hopefully you can see these. She sent me some of her famous stitch markers, and they are purple, which is lovely. You'll see I'm wearing purple today. It's one of my favorite colors. So thank you so much for the minis and the goodies, Sue. I really appreciate it. You were, um, you were quite good to me. And then, um, okay, we'll talk about this yarn, too. Um, we did go down to Connecticut for my grandfather's services, and my dad let me know that he had some yarn for me. And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? And when he said it was a box of yarn, I guess I don't know what I was thinking, but it was a box of yarn. Like a really big box. And it had three different kinds of yarn in it. Um, I'm only going to talk about one of them today because it's the one I'm the most excited about. And then as I'm washing them, because while they are acrylic yarns, um, they've been in storage, I think, for a little while, and they do smell kind of musty. And I don't have a washer and a dryer, so right now I am just hand washing. And um, I know I could probably just go down to the laundromat and do it, but that costs money. So I'm cheap. My dad, actually, and I have gotten some of this yarn before, uh, before I started podcasting, my dad gave me, I think, five skeins, and this is Lion Brand Pamela. You've probably never heard of Pamela, because I'd never heard of Pamela. 
I ended up emailing Lion Brand a few years ago when I got the first five skeins, and I said, you know, hey, if you could let me know approximately when this was made, I'm just trying to get a sense of how old it is. They're very awesome. They got back to me really quickly, and they said, this is a great yarn uh, that we produced from the, I think, the early 70s to the early 90s. So <laughs> it's been a good 20-ish years, I think. I, uh, I'm really bad at math. I think it's been 20 years since this yarn has been produced. And um, it took me a little while initially uh, to think why my aunt would have had this yarn, because this was my aunt's yarn. And then I remembered that she used to make Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls, and they've got bright red yarn for hair. So, and I have now five skeins plus an additional 24. So, I'm not going to run out of this yarn anytime soon. And this is going to blow the camera out. You may want to put on some sunglasses or maybe dim the lights in the room. Or maybe just shut your eyes and only peek out like a little bit or put your hands up. I don't know what you want to do because this is going to be very bright. <laughs> like fire engine stop sign like everybody that I talked to is like, oh my god, that's bright red. Actually, that's not blowing it out nearly as badly as I thought it was going to. But this is bright red, people. This is this is a color that does not really exist in nature. Uh, this is, again, Lion Brand Pamela. It is 100% virgin acrylic, because that's how they used to market yarns. Uh, so I guess this has never been in a garment or used before. And actually, I also have the label to give you a sense of um, how old this is. Uh, it does say it's like 113 grams. Uh, it costs 94 cents at a store named James Way, which is no longer in business. And uh, it is in the scarlet colorway. Um, so I'm a little iffy on the yardage on this. The Ravelry page says 100 grams is like 200 and I want to say 80 yards. When I wound this up, because it was in just like, you know, the regular center pole Lion Brand Hank, you, you know, the like cylinder that urine comes in and you pull it out. Um, I did want to wash it in a sort of hank like this. And um, when I did it on my two yard Nitty Naughty, I got about 220 yards from 113 grams. So my math could be off. Um, I'm definitely going to underestimate how much I have of this. Um, but I have, you know, 29 skeins of it too. So I can make probably a house out of this if I wanted to. I'm thinking I would like to make a an afghan or a blanket for our bed. It is incredibly bright red. I am aware of that. It's going to be a lot of red all at once. But at the same time, I rent. Uh, the walls are white. The floor is light brown. And I don't really have a decor to match. And it will be nice to uh, use up some of this yarn from... 20 years ago. And then if I have remnants and leftovers, there are some projects out there that use red yarn in them. Um, I know a couple offhand, and I will probably end up using the rest of this in, like, charity stuff. Thought really briefly about a sweater, but it's just not my color. <laughs> I'm not sure this is anybody's color. Not in a big garment, anyway. An accent piece, a hat, some gloves, something like that probably would work out really well. But anyway, this is exciting. I know not everybody loves acrylic, but um, it's got a family connection, it's got a history, and uh, it was free, and I like free. And it actually feels, um, you know, I hand washed that, so it didn't have the benefit of softening up in the dryer, but um, it is not scratchy, which is nice. And I think it'll make a nice sturdy blanket, too. So, that is uh, some additional stash that I got recently. Um, I did also get a couple of patterns. I forgot to mention this the last time I podcasted, like a real episode, not the Rhinebeck episode. And um, I bought myself the Pebble Beach shawl pattern, which is a, uh, it's about, let's see, 3.7, I believe, pounds on Ravelry, uh, which today works out to about $5.82. Um, and it comes with, I think, directions for three different shawls, um, including a gigantic one which is in lace weight yarn, and since I recently bought three skeins of lace weight yarn, I thought I'd make myself a nice, gorgeous, humongous shawl, and it looks pretty easy. 
not up in the queue, you know, for a while, but I don't usually buy patterns. I usually look for free ones, and I thought it would be nice to buy myself a pattern. That would go with my yarn. And then also, um, after my grandfather died, uh, one of the gals that I VKN with, who's Mandy Pinecone, very graciously um, wanted to give me a little, like, sorry for your loss, make you feel a little bit better present. And she bought me the Josephine uh, sweater pattern, which is a $6 US um, download on Ravelry. And she picked really well. This had been in my favorites for a while. I um, It's a sport weight sweater. And um, I will put a link in the show notes also. And I do actually have a sport weight quantity of sweater yarn. I'm not 100% sure on the yardage, so I'll have to double check that. Um, but I have some Reynolds whiskey, which is no longer produce, produced. And um, it's in this really beautiful lavendery blue colorway. And um, I think it'll be a nice sweater to make. I do want to make a sweater before my next birthday because I'll be turning an age that I don't want to talk about. (laughs) And I thought that I should um, make a sweater before that birthday. So I've got the yarn. Now I've got a pattern for it. Um, And I forgot to mention, it is by um, Ellen or Elin Berglund. And it's just a really beautiful sweater pattern. So you will um, get the link for that in the show notes as well. And... um, Technically, I guess this falls under stash, too. Um, I bought this before Rhinebeck. Um, It came in handy for Rhinebeck, and it will continue to come in handy. Um, I use a kitchen scale for measuring, and most of the time that works out pretty well. Um, I did think that I used 3 grams for my mini skeins for my blanket. Uh, I learned from using the scale that I purchased off of Amazon that I use about a gram 0.6. So I found this, uh, actually, Jessica of the Sarah Nova Crafts video podcast, which you can find on YouTube. We got together, we did a mini skein swap. She had this scale with her as she was weighing out my minis. And I'm like, this is amazing, and I need the link for this. Um, Because especially not everybody uses 5 grams, and so you can actually get really precise with this. This is a smart way scale. Yeah, smart way. And it's basically a jewelry um, weighing scale a little thing on it. It's just got, you know, it's a little fold up and you turn it on. There's um, where you put your yarn or whatever you're measuring. And it measures, you know, to 0.1 gram, basically. Um, I'm pretty sure 0.1. Or is it 0.01? Now I don't remember now that I'm talking about it. Come on. Nope, it's actually to the um, 0.01, so to the hundredth of a gram, which is pretty great. Um, In my case, that let me see how little yarn I was using. Or if you're trying to um, break up a 100 gram skein as evenly as possible with like 20 people in a swap, you can do it that way too. It is limited. It only weighs up to 100 grams. So you couldn't put like, you know, my cup of tea on there. The scale would freak out. But um, especially if you're using something for a project and you want to, you know, get the most exact yardage for... um, your project. You can weigh your project and weigh how much yarn you have left and get a sense of that from there. And it was really inexpensive. I think it was only like $10 on Amazon, which was pretty neat. Um, so I bought that and uh, it's come in very handy and it's very portable too, which is really great. I will talk a little bit This isn't really its own segment, but I have been mentioned on some podcasts lately, and so I wanted to say thank you for the shout-outs. The first is the 90% Knitting Podcast, and I've totally blanked on this very nice lady's name, because I do that and I don't write things down properly, so I'm sorry. She very nicely gave me a shout-out for episode 18, which was the drinking game. Um, And, uh, yeah, that was really neat. I don't even know how she heard about me. I mean, I've heard about her. I'd never watched her podcast before she mentioned me, but, um, lovely podcast. She, um, I think she dyes yarn and fiber, if I'm remembering properly. Beautiful stuff. Um, Fiber Nymph, I believe is the name of her shop. It'll all be right in show notes, which I'll put out eventually, right? And, uh, so that was really neat. And then I have also been mentioned recently on, um, any podcast that I mentioned it on my Rhinebeck episode, they've talked about me saying hi. Um, the Canadian knitter just mentioned me in her most recent 
podcast, so that was cool. Andrea the Cat Lady, uh, Jessica of Sarah Nova Crafts podcast, um, Amanda of Stitching You and More. So it's always nice to get mentions, and if I get new viewers out of that, that's really neat. If you have heard about me on another podcast and you'd like to let me know where you heard about me from, if I haven't watched them, I would like to, to see what they're all about and to say thank you for mentioning me. So feel free to put a comment in the thread for this episode on Ravelry if you found me from another podcast. Um, We'll do just a little bit more, and then I'll let you get on with your day, because this is going to involve a lot of editing, because I'm very tired and I keep making mistakes. Um, I did do a little bit of extra credit. I finally got another um, catalog in the mail, which I've been using to cut up little balls of yarn for my decoupage project, which is conveniently still on my desk because I never put anything away and if you've seen this before it's not any different from the last time you saw it but basically just I cut out little balls of yarn and I've been decoupaging them into this bowl it's just going to be a little decorative bowl thought I'd have enough ran out and then didn't get a catalog in the mail for like three months but I just got one in the mail and so I've been cutting out lots of little yarn balls and I'll probably work on this um pretty soon because A, it seems like everything I touch with knitting I ruin, and B, as soon as I finish this, I get to start my cross stitch. That was the deal I made to myself and I've been sticking with it. So I've been cutting out tiny yarn balls to decoupage, make a total mess out of this with. So that's my extra credit. And then the last segment is just kind of life stuff. Um, We already talked about my grandfather. He was 96. He lived um, lived a good long life. So It was, you know, still very sad. I hadn't seen him in a while. When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. So that was kind of a bummer, um, and I've had a little bit of a difficult time dealing with that. But, you know, life does go on, I guess. Um, I finished War and Peace. It was awful. I really can't recommend that you read it. I, I feel like a bad person for saying I didn't like it, especially because I have a degree in English. But I didn't like it. Um, it had two epilogues. I don't know why. Um, the first epilogue wasn't awful. The second epilogue was very cerebral and very, like, talking about history and trends in history. And I'm still not entirely sure whether the author thinks that we have free will or if we don't. Um, and he basically still thinks that Napoleon is an idiot who got really lucky. Um, And even when there was no war, nobody was really happy. So, if you want to read it, if you enjoyed it, great. Um, I have deleted it off of my Amazon account and off of my Kindle. And I am not going to reread that. If I ever say that I'm going to reread it, please, someone sit on me. Take away all access to books. Did not like it. Uh, I did let myself begin reading a couple of new books. Um, One on my Kindle is just a fun vampire romance novel because I like romance novels so you know that's just who I am and uh, that I started because I didn't have the book that I actually wanted to start because we were still driving back from the funeral and then I went to the library and I took out the um, Alana book by Tamora Pierce which are sort of young adult fantasy books if you've never read them it's um it's a quartet And then she has more books in um, sort of a larger world that she's built there. And um, I read these books in middle school, so probably a good, like, 15-ish, 17 years ago. Whatever, a long time ago. Uh, The first book was published in the 80s, and I decided that I had enjoyed reading them, and I wanted to reread them. So I did actually find the last two in the quartet for sale at a used bookstore, had to take the first two out, but I am enjoying it pretty much just as much as I did when I was a kid. So that's been nice to um, go back and read something just for fun. Something, you know, light that I don't have to think about, but that is still really enjoyable. Uh, we also saw Lorena McKennett. Uh, that was actually the day that my grandfather died. We had the tickets. I thought keeping busy would be great. Um, she puts on a fabulous show. If you're not familiar with her, she's mostly, like, Celtic world-type music. Very soothing, very pretty. Uh, She sounds exactly like she does on the CD, but she's not um, lip-syncing. She's obviously an artist who 
cares about her voice and has really taken care of it, which is just really nice to see and um, put on a really great show. And my husband actually stuck around afterwards to meet her and get a great picture with her and he got to give her a hug. I was a little bit just done with the day at that point. It had been a very long day and I went back to the car and I just sort of sat there and read War and Peace because I needed to do something because I just needed to keep my mind occupied at that point. So, uh, I think that is the episode. I've still got a little bit of tea left, so that's good. Um, And I've got some editing to do, so I should probably go do that. I've got some giveaway winners to, uh, to notify and a giveaway to put up on Instagram. If you've stuck with me through the whole thing, I really appreciate it. You're pretty awesome and very nice. And so I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Remember, it gets done one stitch at a time. Have a great couple of weeks.